Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. One who eats with me. Surely you don't mean 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 me. Surely he doesn't mean me. What does he mean by that? I don't understand. Not me, Jesus. Hello, and thank you for tuning in to today's Passion Week devotional. Today we're talking about the Last Supper, and I want us to turn to Matthew chapter 26. We're going to read from verses 26 through 28. This is what it says. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it. This is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. There's a question I want to answer today. And the question is, what is the Last Supper? And what does that really mean for me today? Well, the Last Supper was a time when Jesus, he sat down to have his last meal with his disciples, his closest friends at the time, and those he was training to do work in the ministry. And this was the last meal he was going to have with them before he was handed off, betrayed, and crucified on a cross. Not me, Jesus. It is one of the twelve, one who dips bread in the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go as it is written about him. But woe to the man who betrays the Son of Man, for it would have been better if he had not even been born. But Jesus uses this time to teach and to command his disciples to do something. It's something now we call communion today. But he's commanding them to do that, to remember the sacrifice that he was about to make, where he was going to lay down his life as a sacrifice for us. So in the Last Supper, we learn a couple principles. And the first principle I want to highlight is the ultimate principle. Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. He's the only sacrifice worthy enough to cover our sins. And his blood washes away all of our sins. That's why he says to take this cup. It's poured out to forgive many sins. It says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, But if we keep living in the pure light that surrounds him, we share unbroken fellowship with one another. And this is the key. And the blood of Jesus, his son, continually cleanses us from all sin. See, when we take communion... We do this to remember that Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for us on the cross. It's the blood of Jesus that continually cleanses us from all sin. We depend on Him, not on us. It's like the old song that says, What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is my body. So you mean to tell me that there's nothing I can do, nothing I can say, no amount of good acts I can do that can make me right with God? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And the great thing is that Jesus willingly, willingly, went through his heart and his love for us, willingly gave up himself and offered his blood as a sacrifice to wash away our sin. 
See, as Jesus invites his disciples around a table and he says, I want each of you to drink of this cup. That's a representation of how he invites you and I to receive his forgiveness. See, Jesus is inviting you to the table. It isn't something he's asking you to work your way towards. It's not something he's saying that you need to do spiritual gymnastics in order to earn his love. He's inviting you to the table. He's poured out his blood as a sacrifice and he's saying, would you take, would you receive my love and my forgiveness? The second principle that we can see in the Last Supper is this. Jesus fulfills the covenant between God and man. Jesus is the way that we can have a relationship with God. It's only through him. It's only through Jesus. It says in 1 Timothy 2, 5, there is one God and there is one man standing between God and men. And that man is Christ Jesus. Again, we don't need fancy gymnastics. We don't even need to live a perfect life. We don't need to reach a, a state of, of enlightenment. All we need is Jesus. It's only Jesus that gives us right standing with God. Jesus has this supper, last supper, as a moment to teach his disciples that what he is about to do by going to the cross and offering his blood, he is fulfilling the covenant that brings man and God together. You know, it's interesting that even Judas, even Judas was at that table. He would later betray Jesus. Now, why is that so important? Because we may feel like a Judas at times. We may feel like we've gotten off. We may feel like we've done wrong things, that we may feel like there's a lot of sin that has happened in our life, that have probably caused us to push God away. But even Judas was invited to that table. Now, it was said there, it was predicted that he would eventually betray Jesus. But I think the important thing to remember is to be encouraged this Easter, knowing that it is only Jesus that connects us with God, not our good behavior. It's only faith in Christ and his blood and his sacrifice that gives us salvation. It's not our works. It's not our titles. It's not our positions. This is the blood of my covenant. Truly I tell you, I will not drink from this vine again until I'm in the kingdom of heaven with God. So I pray that this Easter you're encouraged, you're uplifted, knowing that Jesus invited you to the table to have communion, to have fellowship with Him. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's devotional. We hope that you can tune in tomorrow as we continue our Passion Week journey.